the shooting range. In this episode, Pages of History, The Pershing's Undecided Class, Tactical Briefing, Small Changes, Large Impacts, and Metal Beasts, A New Mighty IFV. The parade of new machines is still on. Today's highlight is a top Chinese infantry fighting vehicle. It's ready to challenge any counterpart from another nation and fight for the title of the best IFV in the game. Please welcome the ZBD-04A. The main advantage it offers is high firepower. It's similar to Soviet IFVs in this regard. The turret has two calibers installed at once a 30mm autocannon that can shoot discarding sabot shells, and a 100mm launcher barrel that can offer tandem anti-tank guided missiles. The former is great for destroying lightly armored vehicles, while the latter comes in handy when meeting tanks head-on. The launcher is the very thing that gives this Chinese IFV an edge. Anti-tank missiles can be reloaded in only 4 seconds thanks to an autoloader, which means you can win quite a number of duels. What this new vehicle can't offer is high mobility. It does have a pretty strong 560 horsepower engine, but with a mass of 23 tons, we can't call it impressive. The ZBD-04A can keep up with tanks off-road, but that's about it. So don't expect to build your strategy on speed. Flanking an enemy would require some thorough route planning, with multiple options for attacks and retreats. This vehicle's armor is at best questionable, although this is true for most of its counterparts. The front can stop large-caliber machine guns, and the engine placed there can sometimes save you from an enemy shell, but any hit to the turret is very likely to obliterate this IFV. On the other hand, it can offer an excellent set of extra equipment. The crew enjoys thermals, a recon drone, smoke launchers, ESS, a laser rangefinder, and even a laser warning receiver. All these tools help you get a comprehensive picture of the battle, detect enemies quickly, and respond to changes in a timely manner. Don't forget about scouting, by the way. Destroying a spotted target reduces the cost of aircraft, so you can save yourself some spawn points. All in all, while this Chinese IFV does come with some flaws, its advantages make it an amazing support machine that can also hold its own ground even against tanks. The American Army spent quite a lot of time looking for a replacement for the M4 Sherman medium tank and in 1944, it finally accepted the M26 Pershing into service. This combat vehicle's complicated development reflected on its performance. With a mass close to 40 tons, it was comparable to the German Panther or the Soviet IS-2 heavy tank, but neither its firepower nor its armor could be called superior. At the same time, it stayed pretty mobile thanks to its 500-horsepower engine. The Pershing's performance was confusing for the military. They couldn't even decide on its classification at first, but ultimately it was designated a heavy tank. Named the T-26E3, the new machine was sent to war in Europe. The Allies read the documentation and naturally treated it as a heavy tank on the front lines, but that was a mistake. As it soon turned out, the M26 could take a punch from 75mm cannons used by the Panzer IV, but bigger guns could easily penetrate its armor. And so the M26 found itself in an awkward position. Some militaries did prefer the new tank over the Sherman after studying its performance, while others, like General Patton, thought its flaws too significant. The worst offenders were its fuel-hungry engine, large mass, and the discrepancy with the American doctrine for using tanks. The Americans weren't the only ones confused by the Pershing. The Soviets gave the M26 a few tests in the spring of 1945. They too considered it a heavy tank and compared it to another heavy, the IS-3, the medium T-44, and the German Panther and Tiger tanks. The operators praised the convenience for the crew, the good transmission and gearbox, the smooth driving, but not the firepower or armor. The M26 had thinner steel plates than the IS-3, and its 90mm shells offered unimpressive armor penetration. At that time, the Americans were already working on an improved Pershing, the T26E5. The engineers increased its armor to 150mm and even more in the turret. They also managed to keep the mass within reasonable limits. 
Alas, this project wouldn't last long. At first, the suspension proved problematic, and then the war itself ended, so the project was dropped. Despite the advantages the new M26 offered, it retained an Achilles heel, low mobility. The Pershing was moved to the medium class and sent back to the drawing board. Later prototypes received a new transmission and a powerful engine made by Continental. By the way, this engine family took deep roots, both in the American Army and elsewhere. It was also used on the M47 and M48 medium tanks, the M60 main battle tank, and a couple decades later, on the famous Israeli Merkava. It was only natural that the American Army loved the new Pershing. The tank was ultimately designated the M46 Patton, served till the early 60s, and no one ever doubted it was a medium tank. We have this tradition where we first talk about the main highlights of an update and then tell you about small but still important changes that would have otherwise gone unnoticed. Today's tactical briefing is about the Alpha Strike update. Let's start with the aircraft. You can now use custom fuel loads for internal tanks. There's a new slider that you can move to any position between minimum and full, or pick one of the old presets if you prefer that way. Helicopter pads have undergone some changes in mixed battles. The nearest spawn points have no anti-aircraft guns that could be a problem for aircraft going slightly outside the ground map boundaries. To help helicopter pilots prepare for possible attacks, we've also added markers for aerial threats within the range of helicopter pads and airfields. We're adding external fuel tanks to more jet aircraft. This time, some of the aircraft got their drop tanks for the first time, like the F-14 or the MiG-21, while others got extra wing tanks that were a popular request in the comments. The F-16 and the Gripen look extra fabulous with those. We're adding more tutorial missions for sophisticated weaponry. The new ones can show you how to use air-to-air -air missiles with active radar homing, as well as all air-to-surface ordnance with laser, TV, and infrared guidance. Many aircraft got new ammunition, custom loadouts, and ejection seats. We've also recreated the cockpit and helmet displays for the Apache helicopter family. Ground vehicle mechanics got some fresh improvements, too. We've reworked the nuclear bomb process in realistic battles. You won't need to leave your current vehicle anymore. It'll stay on the map the same way it happens in Arcade. There's also new indicators for fires in drop tanks and ammo storages with blowout panels. You can now tell how long you'll need to wait before that inextinguishable fire ends. By the way, the burning time for drop tanks and blowout paneled ammo has been reduced. You can now restock partially spent ammo belts, magazines, and missile launchers with multiple projectiles on captured points. Moreover, if you move inside the area, your reload process pauses instead of resetting. If you're a fan of customizing vehicles, you'll love the new places available for decoration. Add some personal touch to mud flaps, protective screens, ERA elements, and some other parts of tanks. For naval battles, we've added some fire control system UI elements. There's a new indicator in the top left corner, next to the radar, showing the relative positions of your ship and the one you have in your crosshairs. It makes it easier to understand where your target is headed and calculate the correct lead. The interface also shows undershoot, overshoot, and coverage, with a clear indication in meters. The naval hit camera is now displayed at all times when your opponent is in the crosshairs. Under the gun and torpedo launcher damage indicators, you can now find the number of intact and destroyed modules, and under the motion indicator, there's now a percentage of enemy top speed you can achieve with current damage. That's far from all the changes brought by the spring update. You can check the full change log on our official website. Meanwhile, we'll answer some of the questions you ask us in the comments. The first question was sent by a player called The Ursus. Why does the Ocelot have a laser rangefinder? Hi Ursus, a laser rangefinder can calculate the distance to a target. It's not terribly useful for the Ocelot, but does it mean we should remove it? Besides, you can use the rangefinder to imitate an attack on targets equipped with laser warning receivers. It can never damage them, but your enemy doesn't need to know that. The Holly Snail asks, 
What's the best cast load for the Su-25BM? Oh, hey there! From one snail to another, the best rockets are the S-25O, and the best missiles are the Ka-29TE and the Ka-25ML. And of course, don't forget some air-to-air -air missiles. Another question comes from STGGC Sub Commander Sip. Can we start getting pages of history for naval vessels? Hello, Sebastian. Well, we can't say that we have no naval pages of history, but if you want more, we're happy to oblige. Otakan writes, would like to see an arsenal on the tornado. Hey, Otakan. The straight tornadoes can't boast a huge arsenal yet, and their loadouts are pretty straightforward, so we're going to focus on aircraft with more variety for the time being. And the last comment for today was written by Blood for Blood. I don't know if I'm tripping, but the flares don't work against R-60Ms in head-ons. I've never experienced this with any other planes. You're dead even if you pre-flare and or spam. Hello? Why don't we try to replicate it? Let's launch an R-60M and use some flares. Hmm, looks like the missile got him. You might be having issues with a different aircraft that has a more significant heat signature. If that's true, try to turn off your afterburner during an attack or before it. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to treat your favorite tank to some new decor, leave a like, share your thoughts and comments, and see you next week.